and ain't no wannabes here With some not so nice advice for your writing career To be clear, no punches will be pulled But the punch may be spiked How they like before they get on the mic To my left we got the mighty Mer Lafferty And if I piss her off, believe me, she'll come after me And her co-host met Evan Wallace on the right Yeah, she may be half as hype as she can take him in a fight So settle in, folks, buckle in and boot up Time to meddle in a way to make your writer shut up It's hard work, but the perk is that it's fun and exciting Facebook will still be there when you're done writing Ditch Diggers! Twitter handle for the purposes of today, my name should perhaps be Alistair Flipping Stewart. No, Alistair. Uh, okay. No, this is Ditch Digger Down, you have to be Matt. Hold on, he actually sent me some phrases for this. <laughs> Fucking right on. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Because I'm worried. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, to be added, hold on. Fucking right on. There we go, there we go, thank you. Joey. So okay. we have our uh, our 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 yes. to plan. Our guests, some of our guests have not shown up yet. We're going to go ahead and start. What we are doing today is the very exciting and violent and bloody the Hugo Games. <laughs> what they need out of the cornucopia in order to fight through their career in order to win the Hugo. Now, the thing is, we've, we've already gathered a couple of our people, some of whom, ha which one of you uh, uh, spoke up for your little sister? Oh, me. Yeah, yeah, so, so <laughs> Jen's little sister was, was, was called and she's like, no, 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 tribute, tribute, I, I, I volunteer. And then, that is Jen Utten. The, the, to two people who are nominated for Hugos this year. Next we have Nava Wolf, who is best editor finalist for the Hugo. It's true. Um, I'm a career tribute. You're what? I'm a career tribute. Yes, career tribute, yes, yes. And the problem is we, do, we need another tribute. And um, we, we have empty spots here. And so, basically, if you're number 34 and you've been nominated for Hugo, you have to stand up! I'm all here to you! Yeah! <laughs> Best short story finalist, Nebula winner, what else am I putting out? Uh, Locus. Locus winner of the World Fantasy Award. Star, everybody. <laughs> So first, our deal is, you're all going for, or representing people who are going for different Hugos, so you're not shooting each other yet. <laughs> Keyword there. Yes. But the thing is, you really do only have a second or two to get what you need out of the cornucopia. And so, everyone's going to get a chance to choose. We'll start with Nava. Oh boy. Very well. Why are you giving me the plot? Because it's a good segue. <laughs> if Matt were here, we'd be a good segue. Oh man. We've, we've been over. The, he has a card for this. He has a card for the segue? He has a card for this. card says roll for seeing some shit. Um, roll for seeing some shit? Different card. Um, <laughs> he, said, he said the segues will be a problem. Remind her of this. Because <laughs> it's a yes, yes. So Nava. Yes, Mer. You are in the. You you have your, your what's your what's your preferred weapon? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I can ask that. Amal, what's Nava's preferred weapon? <laughs> 
This is not going to be the institutional question, yes. but she does have two lips and no axes. So yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we got two whips. We got two whips. So you have in reach of your whips. You have a book that you've just read from an absolute nobody that is hot as shit. This is oh my god, it's blowing your mind. But no one's ever heard of this person. They actually have no social media presence. Their name rhymes with something really filthy. It's going to be all that you know people are going to make fun of them online. And then you've got a book by a solid mid-list author that'll sell. It, it'll sell. So you only grab one. I'm going for the debut. Going for the debut? Going for the debut. The hot as shit. Why, why would you go for the debut when you know that the other one is, is solid monies? The other one, because I'm taking a gamble, because I want to win a Hugo. It's a bigger gamble. It's something that's a risk. It's definitely a risk. But there's something really exciting. I, I like the idea of building a endless career, but there's also something really exciting about discovering something, discovering something magical and something brand new and something wonderful, and showing it to the world and yelling at them about how amazing it is and building it up from the ground up. So I'm going for the debut. Okay. And right. if we need to use a pseudonym, we'll use a pseudonym. Okay. <laughs> so Bartholomew Hoop Pants is very is now in your <laughs> That is so unfortunate. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. You must be very proud. <laughs> It'll be mysterious. Of the New England Hoop Pants? Of the New England Hoop Pants, yes. Yes. Yeah, you always been fun. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, but Nava can now, if, if she signs with it, she can take five off the, wow. the advance and, and shut it to you. So, um, Jen. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, so, Jen, you have two authors, and you love them both a lot. Oh, no. And they're both nominated for Hugo, and you know what? They're nominated for the same one. <laughs> Oh my God, it's, it's, like it's, it's like it's happening right now. <laughs> it's like a real life scenario laid out in front of you. It's so All real. Of this is hypothetical. Oh. <laughs> it's not <That's> hypothetical. <laughs> so what's well, my choice? Well, you, you can only grab one author out of the cornucopia. They're both looking very cute. Describe. Wait, but what's the difference between the two? Oh, in this two authors who are me. In this, in this, in this, in this situation, I'm obviously also in incredible shape. Um, and I grab both of them. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I would not be able to grab them very far. I, I very much hope nothing is on fire. But, I mean, it, both of them. No, well, I like, played. <laughs> well played. I love all my children. <laughs> the thing is, Jen has to say that because she is here representing both of us. Do we and... need to move over and make room for her? We have, some, we have some friends here. Yes, we do have room on stage, I believe. We were, we were calling for all of the uh, Hugo Games uh, uh, tributes, but I think we have room for three more. Yes. Just put it in the do we need to slide down? Sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 Ye
all this time. <laughs> so we've already had, uh, we need to go through Amal and Amal's take on the cornucopia. So Amal, what is your, uh, I, I'm sorry, Jen, I didn't ask your weapon, but clearly you're something gauntlet focused because you were able to grab both clients equally? Um, I mean, is my weapon something that I already have? Because Nava got whips that she already owns, so. <laughs> You, you know, we're pretending here. The, the actual answer no. is about the agency. <laughs> is the important thing. Okay. You want to make up whatever shit you want about your weapons. Okay. My, 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 weapon, weapon. my weapon is the pen because it's mightier than the sword. <laughs> <laughs> and see. <laughs> I want to say she is evil with the pen. I, I can say that for, for a fact. Uh, so, uh, Amal, what is your weapon? Steal her wits. <laughs> We're not She's fighting like, I think you're very wider. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Uh, I can answer this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I okay. no, 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 wait. no, it's cool, it's cool. I can answer this one. I wouldn't want to damage her. It's I fine. volunteer! Oh. <laughs> uh, Mirror, we're full next time, I promise. Yes. <laughs> okay. You can try. You know it, wait, bro. <laughs> Okay, so my weapon is the throwing axe. The throwing axe. She can land it on a target, and it's amazing. <laughs> so you've got a cornucopia, and Amal is a latecomer, and I didn't prepare for this, so now I get to play improv. Uh, so Amal gets to choose between. Oh, right. well, you know, there's all, there's a small shelf in your house, and there's only a uh, uh, there's a nebula and a locust in there. <laughs> name on it, and I'm sorry, but you have to throw your axe at one of them, shatter it, and grab the other one. <laughs> the, the actual business question here is, oh, which war do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> no booing. All right, all right. You're a monster. <laughs> I'm sorry. Speaking strictly tactically, <laughs> yes. the nebula is Heavy as wait, can we can we cut yes, on the podcast? Okay. Please. The nebula is heavy as fuck. Yeah. And it would be a very useful alternate weapon. So also it would be easier to embed the axe in the locust, which is a plaque. Okay. So I'm gonna throw the axe at the locust for whatever reason, because it attacked me, I guess. <laughs> campaign makes no sense. Well, my, 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 <laughs> if it shatters it, you're not gonna want to pick it up because you cut your hand, so yeah, it made sense in my head. I'm working on your process. It's cool, it's cool. No, it's fine. I, I will throw the axe at the Locus Award, grab the enormous hunk of lucite that is the nebula, and uh, retrieve the axe, because and, that's important. Yes, and, and, and now you're set with like, a set. budgeting device and a throwing and axe a throwing. for the rest of the thing. Exactly. By the way, did you know that you can get a throwing axe for $40 in Amazon Prime? It will come in two days. <laughs> I'm just saying. And Nava, what is your Amazon number that you want That's everybody to be also... buying axes under? <laughs> <laughs> just buy one for me. I can give you a work address to send them to me. <laughs> I don't have one yet. Ditch Digger's product Nava. placement. <laughs> no, no, no. Ditch Digger's product placement. Of course. Again, Mr. Wallace. This is the most dangerous information anyone has ever given me. Ditch Digger's is brought to you by Monster Todd's Apple Juice, the only Apple Juice not made of despair. <laughs> <laughs> Our bottle of rum in a night, and and on our show he promotes Mops for Tots <laughs> <laughs> to a frankly disturbing degree. <laughs> it hurts my head, it really does. So clipping in your cornucopia, you see another science fiction concept album. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Or you see a more traditional rap album, and you're thinking about your future. Are you going to go for the concept, the wild shit that brought you here, or are you going to go for possibly what your more traditional fans are into? It depends where you go for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so. All right, so, I'm sorry, I, I missed it. What, what, what is your chosen weapon? Okay, are, are we a party? You're yeah, a party. I think we're right, yeah. right. So we need something that no one else has, or just like what? I mean, We've got a pan of throwing axe and two whips, so you're, you're, yeah. the field is open. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say cow drops because we're running away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how that will get you to the cornucopia, 
be able to make sure you can get away. It's a so. very defensive weapon. It just occurs to me that there are three of you, and I really should say that you could pilot a Jaeger together. <gasps> Damn. The Pacific Rim next thing. Oh, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. So Amal's shoot. Are you I shouldn't have given him that. No. Is it a mech? They, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not the one dispensing the weapons, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's a mech over there! What the hell are you doing grabbing the cow truck? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a much better idea. Yeah. <laughs> Take a fucking mech, then. <laughs> so, in, in a mech, Clifton goes up to the cornucopia and grabs. We're talking about careers. We're talking about the Hugos. We're talking about... Yeah. Actual, you know, it's a real question. It's just yeah. very silly. No, yeah. I mean, I, th- I think the, 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 the real answer is it would probably... It would have to be neither of those things. It would have to be some other sort of idea. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think the, from a career perspective, what we've always said is that doing the whatever the thing it is that only we think only appeals to the three of us is the only thing we've ever done, right? So whatever small amount of success we've had... Uh, has only has has come out of this kind of just doing the things that we think are good. So, are we going to make another sci-fi al- concept album next? We're not. But will it be some sort of like weirdo idea album? Yeah, probably. You know, so like, uh, so I don't think. And also, it's not the easiest thing in the world for the three of us to make a traditional sounding rap album. <laughs> For ourselves. I'm not uh, traditional as to your previous albums, not oh, like... Oh, those are traditional. Yes. Well, if that's what traditional rap sounds like, then fuck yeah, we're going to do it. In the tradition of clipping. In the tradition of clipping. Super, stuff super or... traditional ball bearings and <laughs> broken, glass. broken glass rap albums. It's like, <laughs> it's very dark so, so what you're saying is maybe you wouldn't go to the market. Jen... Jen, Jen, what am I doing wrong? Um, you're writing books that you like. Oh. Yes. yes. Okay. This is the thing. You know, I think the advice to write the thing that you, do the thing that you like as the artist is the most important thing. Because if you don't like it, if you're only writing for this nebulous, or, you know, making music for this nebulous sort of, like, miscellaneous other, you know, you better at least make sure you like it, because otherwise you're not even going to listen to it if you don't like it, or you're not even going to read it if you don't like it, so. All right. If I may, uh, Mr. Wallace also provided a note for this sensuality. <laughs> it's almost as though he's in the room. I hear his voice. Matt Wallace has a Brit, everyone. <laughs> yeah, we got that plan. Yeah, so, so now you all have your weapon and you have your thing from the cornucopia that doesn't quite match the Hunger Games mythology, but we're going with it. We got your plan for survival. So now you have the beginning of your... Amal, what I do? Amal, what did you do? Nothing! I did nothing. I love you, Amal. You came up in the last minute. Wonderful. So your plan for survival. So, Jen, you've got your two clients on your shoulders. You're carrying them like a boss. That's right. In this scenario, I'm in shape and can carry two grown women. Yes. (laughs) I did say that. Yes. Okay. You did. I believe it. So, so, okay. we're, we're, We're. What do you do to stay motivated and productive? Under the new and intense scrutiny of being an agent carrying two adult women across a <laughs> large field, possibly with Nava cracking you with the whip, and you see a mech off in the distance, and they're... Um, <laughs> well, you know, to stay, to stay motivated and to keep my eye sort of on the prize, um, I make sure that my two grown women that I'm carrying, you know, have the resources that they need from me as their agent that I'm... You know, <laughs> games, I would be shot first if this was like the real situation, um, because I can't run and I'm a big Freddy cat. But as an agent, I have to be sort of on the front lines for them. So if they don't have time, if they don't have, you know, motivation or inspiration, then it's my job to kind of make sure that they have that. And feed them and water them. Do you have granola bars and gin in your back pockets? Unfortunately, no. I actually tried to buy a tiny bottle of champagne, but apparently it's not allowed out of the food court, which is the saddest phrase I've ever said in my life. (laughs) (laughs) I tried. (laughs) I do have Band-Aids, gum, and Advil, though. I thought your sequel didn't sell was the saddest thing you've ever said. (laughs) No, no, too close. 
No, that's uh, no, that's not the saddest thing I've had to say in the last. Oh, honey. <laughs> okay, I'm just going personal here, but Nava. Yes, sir. Much. Oh, what I the peanut gallery. Peanut gallery, <laughs> Miriam. Do you ever want to be on this show? <laughs> What's not his question? What is, well, same thing. You know, we're going. We're going for a little bit of uh, improv here. What is your plan for survival? You've got this hot shot book by a guy who, with an unfortunate name, but it's an amazing book. What is your plan for survival? What do you do? What do you do when your marketing department goes what? First of all, as we already covered, I'm not concerned about his shit name because we are going to sued all the way down for changing that name right off the bat. All right, yes, but it's funny. <laughs> Especially because he doesn't have a social media presence, as you said, That's so true. we can change it to anything we want and launch it brand That's new. True. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> I just did this like a month ago. <laughs> the most important thing, I mean, basically, the the best lie I've ever heard about being an editor is that it's a great job for introverts because you get to sit and read all day, which is a big lying lie. Um, because the number one thing you have to do when you're an editor is sell your product. You have to sell your book to everyone. You have to never shut up and never stop shouting about it to everyone, to your sales force, to marketing, to Twitter, to your friends, to other industry people, to random people you meet on the street. So you have to be passionately enthusiastic about your project. And only sign up things, or hopefully only sign up things that you can be passionately enthusiastic about, always. So you can always be the biggest fan of whatever it is. And when you can't, you can't create in-house buzz if you don't have it. So you just have to go around yelling about your books in the best possible way. Yeah, a phrase that has never been said at a successful acquisition meeting. Yeah, it's cool. It's fine. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so, Flipping, your, your, your plans for the future and your plan for survival, you've got this new batshit glass-breaking, yet similar to the old record, new idea. <laughs> yes, push, push, push the mic, push it, push it. <laughs> what, what are your plans now? You guys are, are now hot in science fiction. So <laughs> Which, as we know, is a very lucrative market. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Beats doing all the major acting things. Everything's going different for you guys. So what are you going to do now with this new plot, plot concept? Do we still have our mech suit? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the mech suit and your plans. You can also incorporate social media into this. Is the mech suit also a metaphor? Because <laughs> Everything's a metaphor. <laughs> it's a new album if we're going to... The mech suit has a recording studio in it, you know. <laughs> And doubles as your new album. <laughs> what are our plans? What are our plans? Are our plans as clipping? Are our plans as individuals? Or yeah. Well, your well, plans for individuals, Mark, would work into your plans for clipping. Right. But... Well, here's. I mean, here is one of the actual plans. Right. Is that um, as like everybody's opportunities start to open up? Right. Like having. Being hot in sci-fi, right? Like leads to, <laughs> leads to other things. So like, you say that with a little bit of like <laughs> disbelief or sarcasm in your voice. Oh no! <laughs> hot in sci-fi. What you mean, being the king of nerd prom isn't yeah. the best thing ever? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that I'm just not convinced that that's the thing, right? <laughs> that, that we are, oh, but uh, <laughs> but but so. Um, Really, the goal is always to. We know that we work really well together, and uh, and so these are people who I want to work with on everything, right? So I'm producing this sitcom, executive producing this sitcom for ABC right now called The Mayor, and like my first thing that I did when I got that gig was hired these guys as the composers on the sitcom, right? So. <laughs> So, so now we get to work together even more, and like st it, it, because it becomes more about time management than anything else, right? We, if I'm all over the place in different parts of the world, and so are they, like it's harder to get together to work on things. So we need as many excuses to be in the same room as possible, because then we can also work on more clipping shit. Uh, so that I mean, that's a big part of it for me is trying to keep the family that you know you work well with together as these opportunities tend to start to come along and trying to like if you have a team that's kind of the team you want to roll with there are a lot of uh like 
hazards that sort of step in the way of that. Sometimes people try to like pry that apart because one, because they have a. Tr- it's difficult for people to look at like the stuff that I did in Hamilton and realize that it has everything to do with the fact that I've been working with these guys for my whole life. You know, like people don't see the connection between that, but for me it is so painfully obvious. So I'm not going to stop working with them, you know, but it's it's harder to convince like a team of studio executives who have never heard a piece of music before apparently in their lives like, oh, that, you know? <laughs> it's funny, it's funny. I mean, you talk about the thing being something that we've done that, 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 that we are really the the, the final word on them, the sort of only initially the only audience for, um, and and I think we all sort of pre, before clipping certainly sort of you and I had music projects that we felt were had like had sort of commercial potential that we thought other people would like, and we were sort of I mean we were making them for ourselves, we were making them for an audience as well, but they did really fine, right. and when we finally said well fuck it let's just make this really sort of noisy weird thing that really is only for the three of us and that's the thing that sort of took off. Uh, it's now interesting, all of a sudden working for ABC, to sort of go back and to say, well, now we have to make things that network executives <laughs> sound like pop songs. Uh, and it's actually, wow. it's been like startlingly easy. <laughs> it turns out they don't know much about what pop songs sound like. Uh, Everything glass did you put into the pop songs? <laughs> More than you'd think. <laughs> you can't get it out of the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's so much There is no room for I think the folks sitting there can't see. Oh, sorry. Blocking. <laughs> Hi, guys. Sorry. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> sorry. Anything else you guys wanted to add? Okay. So, any way you can put violence into that? Blood sports? <laughs> there's a lot of broken glass. Well, you're my autobiography. Can you put violence into that? So, um, <laughs> now actually, I want to go to challenge three, which is... Alliances. We'll start with clipping because you Wait, guys can you talk about the pros and cons spoken. of clipping. Wait, hold on. I don't know. Know. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. It you just talk. means I'm really sneaky. There is this complicated Hello. arrangement. Yeah. You, the thing which um, I find right. really interesting, which unified everything we've heard so far, is actually something very positive and inspiring. It's really easy in creative industries to forget that positivity is good. You know? Uh, I'm, I mean, there's a third point that debate made about how you've know, worked with these guys for a really, really long time, and you guys work very well together and work as a, as a family. It's the fact that you are carrying both your authors out of the corner you go. <laughs> you know, all the way down the line, there's one of the things which so often gets overlooked in, in this kind of field in particular is that you know, positivity is good. It's the, the persistent, focused enthusiasm. Going into the 25th meeting of our book and being able to go, no, this is fucking brilliant just as sincerely as the first time met. And as someone who is on occasion professionally enthusiastic, and on occasion paid to be professionally enthusiastic, as you may be able to tell, it's a tremendous relief to hear that that's present in so many different parts of the industry. And that must be the same for people at every level. You put in this work, you can sit in front of a keyboard, day in, day out, whatever form that keyboard is. Your enthusiasm is for fuel. I did that. It's almost like you did say that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. That's quite all right. I like to think that I just flew under the radar and stole all the other things in the cornucopia. You did, you did. Now you have a mech, two whips, <laughs> a throwing axe, throwing axe, and a pen, and a pair of gauntlets, and a pen. I just threw the gauntlets in there because I wanted someone to take the gauntlets, and no one did. So um, your plan for survival, short stories are different than, than all these other projects. Are you going, oh my god, there's this short story that I sweated about a year ago that's now super hot, but I have to, yeah, yeah you are okay. <laughs> I am, I'm sorry, but please continue the question. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I know that, that you, your creative energy was spent last year. So what are you doing now as everyone's going, oh my God, short story, nomination, win-win. And now you're going, well, I still got to write. What's going on? I am very, very, very slowly writing a novel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'll sell. Clearly. <laughs> yes. 
and you're gonna blurb it, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> blurb right there, Charlie James. I mean, I, I genuinely don't know how much of a survival strategy that is. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, you know, the, the funny thing is too that um, you know most people I know who are novelists have. Uh, sort of an origin story that is when I was a kid I wrote a novel you know and it was terrible and I trumped it but I still wrote a novel when I was like anywhere between 12 and 20 and I never did that like what I was writing at that time was like 10 page character backgrounds and 9 point fonts for my role playing characters so uh, <laughs> it was uh, like a lot of vampire the masquerade oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and change but anyway, um, so I never, I never wrote a novel, and um, and I, there is something super, super intimidating about moving to long form. And uh, when I was little, I decided that I mean I was going to do what Tolkien did, and I was going to write poetry first, and, and then I was going to write short stories, and then I was going to write a novel, and just kind of proceed incrementally along this as if it was running. Um, <laughs> and uh, but and, and weirdly, I am sort of doing that. Like uh, Max Gaston and I just just co-wrote a novella together. So. <laughs> Oh man, it's so good. It's really good. I love it so much. If I can be completely objective about it, um, but it, but the thing is, so like I I, um, I I love all the stuff about collaboration that everyone is saying because uh, I I feel like it is at the core of most of what I do. Like the short story that's up for the Hugo is about two women talking to each other and kind of talking each other out of their horrible stories, and like it's just. It's so I, I feel that with my friends a lot. That in creatively we support each other. Creatively we engage together, and creatively we're more than the sum of our parts. And it's just uh, and so it's lovely. That, like I love to think that like writing a novella with Max is sort of part of the means of getting over this this terror I have of of writing long form, uh, which is such a different different beast. Like I don't know how many of you have like tried to write novels before and not finished them, but. It gets oh, yeah. extremely tedious. You, just, you start noticing every, like, you have to describe people fidgeting all the time. If people are doing dialogue, you have to be like, and then she shifted in her seat. Do you know how often people shift in their seats? A lot. It's infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the, the word, like, the word, I don't know, chuckled. The word chuckled loses all meaning. If people start to, like, you know, just having a conversation, chuckles convey all sorts of different things. It's like, oh, he chuckled. Stop chuckling! It's horrible. Anyway. I feel like this is a totally other subject. <laughs> it is. So all this to say, I, this is how I defend myself. I'll talk at people, and then hopefully my partner in crime will sneak up and kill them. <laughs> so. All right. Are, are you forming an alliance? Are you helping a segue? Are you creating a segue for me? Perhaps we had alliances preformed oh, before we got here. There may have been. <laughs> That's a good segue. Yeah. She chuckled. That's a good segue. Thank you. Right. Thank you almost, Matt Wallace. Um, <laughs> So, uh, obviously, Amal and Nava have already created an, an alliance and gone off into the woods with their whips and throwing axes and uh, look uh, 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 Amal and Nava have already created a story together, sort of. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, it just seemed natural. So, how, how, how do you create real uh, alliances here? And um, I'll start with Jen. Because you still have two authors on your shoulders wondering where the hell the gin is. They're wondering if I can put them down now because Please. they're starting to get... Um, yeah. I'm, uh, my arms are tired, so... Um, well, you know, I have a list of authors. I have about 22 authors at this point. And, um, you know, I hope that my job is to find them editors and people who love their work as much as I do. Because if there's not the enthusiasm... I can love it as much as I want, but I'm not a publisher, so I have to find someone who can sort of take it to the next level. So if the team is there, then you know you can go pretty far. And if the team isn't there, you kill them in their sleep. <laughs> Woo! That's a good agent. Um, I have the right one. Thank you. She's threatened a lot of murder during this con, during over drinks. There's been a lot of murder threatened. It's been awesome. I feel very protected. <laughs> oh, good. Same question? Uh, yes, yeah, same question. Alliances. Alliances. Where do you look for them? What do you seek out of them? And Metaphorically or not? <laughs> whips or not? With my whips. Um, I, I, I can't say I always play by this rule, but really I try to. Life's too short to work with assholes. It just is. <laughs> so, I mean, it's kind of hard to screen for that when you're signing up a writer, but I sort of try. I'm not always successful, but... I want to work with people who I'm going to enjoy working with. My goal is, when I'm signing up a writer, to have 
you know, if it's mutually agreeable to everyone, a long relationship with them, a long professional relationship with them. I want to be working with them for a long time. I want to build their career. I want to be making their books for a really long time. And it's really unpleasant to do when someone is awful. And I don't want to be everyone's best friend, but I do want a good working relationship. I want us to respect each other. I want us to communicate with each other. And I want them to be people who I enjoy working with them and they enjoy working with me. So I'm looking for awesome people who I can make awesome books with. That's basically my goal in life. Aww. Um, uh, you've mentioned uh, Max and Nava. Is there anything else you want to say about Seeking Alliances? Yes. Um, so Nava edited uh, the short story that's up with Hugo. Um, Nava and Dominique Parisien together, who co-edited the anthology The Scarlet Wood, which, if you haven't read, I cannot recommend enough. Like, not just because I have a story in it, but, like, seriously, it's such a good anthology. Uh, I'm, like, yeah, it's, I'm three quarters of the way through it, and I'm dazzled. And, like, in my other life, I'm also a critic, so I feel I can say this with some authority. It's quite fair. It's very, very good. Um, <laughs> that is, but, you've got a critic face. You've got a critic face and an author face. You changed <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Which is which? Yeah, it's clear. Uh, it's very clear. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, I, I I actually want to talk about editors for a second because like working collaborating with another artist is super awesome. Working with Max and the novella was like literally like magic because um, we figured out that what we wanted to do in, in co-writing was to be we were it's epistolary, so one of us would be writing the letter portion and one would be writing the situation in which the other character receives the letter which meant that we were writing at the same time and kind of swapping. And Max writes roughly four times as fast as I do. So this, yes. was, this was awkward at first. Um, but as over the course of sitting in a cabin together and just doing this, he started slowing down and I started speeding up. And by about like act two of the novella, we were just at the same time. It was like a dance. We would finish and swap. And it was like magic because when you're writing and it's a solitary pursuit, it's really easy to get bogged down and like being terrified of it not being good. But so when you get the validation of someone else reading it and going, this is amazing immediately, it's wonderful, at the same time that you are getting to read something that someone else wrote that is wonderful and engaging. So you can say this very genuinely. It just becomes this constant positive feedback loop of loveliness. But working with um, an editor is this this other extremely nourishing, wonderful relationship. In, in the case that all the experiences that I've had have been wonderful in, in the cases, and with Nava and Dominique especially, partly because they waited a very, very long time. I was so late. I was so late. I don't even want to say how late I was. You could probably say exactly how late I was. But they, so like there was a lot of trust <laughs> built into that. Like the fact that they trusted me to turn in a story that would be up to snuff for their anthology in spite of the fact that it was excruciatingly late. Uh, that they kind of like, I felt like they helped you held the door. <laughs> you held the door. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, you, you held the door. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What is that? <laughs> I, I don't even know if you're serious. Because I don't watch the show. I, know, like, I read the books, but I don't watch the show. It's Anyway. But the point is, like, they, they held the door open. And I, I was able to get the story in. But then they made it better. Like, the relationship of actually handing someone something that was special to you and that was very difficult to write and seeing them make it better. And making it better by kind of laying out clear paths for you to follow, it's, it's absolutely wonderful and very nourishing and very great. So, yeah. The most fun, I've had authors apologize to me for having long editorial phone calls. Like, we'll set up a phone call and then we'll talk for two hours or three hours sometimes. And they'll say, I'm so sorry for taking up so much of your time. And I sort of want to shake them a little bit because my job has a lot of unfun parts, and that's the most fun thing. When, an author, when, I, when I get on the phone with an author and there are all of these problems with the book, and they don't know how to fix it, and also I don't know how to fix it, and then we talk it through, and by the end of the phone call, they know how to fix it. It's the most wonderful, satisfying thing. It's, 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 um, I'm losing my words, Pacific Rim. It's fusion, oh, it's drift compatibility. It's drift compatibility, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's, yes, it's fusion, and it's drift compatibility when you're just talking through something, and your brains just become on the same wavelength in about the material, about the project, about the story, about the characters, and you just get to figuring out how to make it more awesome together. And it's a really satisfying thing to do. Unfortunately, we have to stop, but I still have the mic and I haven't wrestled me to the floor, so I'm going to let Clipping, if you want to add anything else on collaboration or cooperation or allies, you want to add anything to that? You have three built-in allies. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I mean, I think, I think the three of us are all really lucky that we've found each other to work in the way that we do because nobody else, nobody else that I work with 
uh, and I work with a lot of other people, works works the way these two guys do, and, and we collaborate really well. Uh, and I and I. Uh, well, and it's more than just the three of us also. I mean, maybe it's more like a Voltron than a... Because uh, <laughs> right. yeah. we, we, we're trying to find our team, so, you know, we, we pick up along the way. We have you know, a mixing engineer we work with every time. You know, so we're trying to have, I, like... I, I would say, I, um, maybe not the best day to do it. I remember my, my wife and I were attending a wedding at one point, and, and somewhere in the vows, uh, the, the, the customer written vows, somebody said, I promise not to ever take you for granted. And I thought, well, that's not really... Actually, I think a partnership, you should be able to take each other for granted because I know that you have my back. I know you can do this thing and I don't need to second guess you or check in on you to make sure it's okay. And we definitely, we have a mixing engineer that we work with. That, you know, we took off and left for Finland and said, hey, can you do this and this and this and this and prove all of these masters for this thing that needs to get done while we're gone and we're just going to be gone? And will do it and it's great. Yeah, we and, uh, literally haven't thought about it. <laughs> not worried that he's going to screw it up or be late or be a jerk to the people he needs to cor- you know, correspond with that usually would be up to us. Um, and that's really valuable and that's not, that's a very short list of people that I've met in my life that I feel that way about as Excellent. I think the real Hugo is the friends we made along the way. Yeah. <laughs> Sports, but we don't have time for it, so we'll start the blood sports tomorrow night and we'll see who up here actually wins the Hugo and who just goes to get drunk. So, I uh, <laughs> hope you guys all watch the Hugos tomorrow night. Thank you for coming to the Hugo Games. Thank you so much to my panel and thank you to my fake Matt Wallace. Woo, <laughs> you can support us at Patreon.com slash Mighty Murr. Ditch Diggers! Theme song by Devo Spice. DevoSpice.com.